Hallelujah. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Open up your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are still going to pray one prayer point. Matthew chapter 13. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Matthew chapter 13. We read from verse 14. Matthew chapter 13. (sighs) Mighty God. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Next verse. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Next verse. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Just keep that verse there. Say blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Turn this into a prayer and command your eyes to see and for your ears to hear lift your voice and pray blessed are your eyes for this shalabatakata shabradika devos lebada shabando brahaska devalakos Are you praying, everyone? Open my eyes, O God. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated and be very sensitive while that happens to you. Be sensitive. The power of God is mighty in this place. And what the Lord is about to show us will truly be a key that will lift us in the name of Jesus. This entire seven days will be a feast of keys in the name of Jesus Christ. That God will grant us grace, spiritual illumination. Hallelujah. Tonight, very briefly, we'll start off. There is, there is so much to share. I just pray that these seven days will really allow us to do justice to these truths. Praise the Lord. But God by his word is appearing unto us and he will bless and lift us in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on someone in overflow one there is a lady in overflow one please carry the person and bring the person I want to speak to the person before we get to the word I'm seeing the hand of God rest on a lady in overflow one please bring the lady and Let's trust God for grace. 
can we still pray for that and say lord do something in my life give me results give me real results take me past the realm of guessing to the realm of mastery In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is saying he is bringing the captivity of your family to an end you see it will sound like a joke until you hear the testimony when a Jimmy was sharing here this is the word of God come straight and it's over except the word does not come when it comes to you that is the end of it this is what we came for that we will encounter his word listen listen let me tell you something challenges are relative they are relative to the grace that confronts them challenges are not general it depends on the grace that confronts them that's why god is granting us access he's granting us illumination praise the lord illumination illumination even by his spirit this row just right here this row down i'm seeing two people who are receiving the spirit of revelation just this last row down like this this is what i'm seeing in the spirit the spirit of revelation and the spirit entered me when he spoke unto me two of them and the spirit entered me when he spoke unto me and set me upon my feet and the spirit entered me and the spirit entered me if someone pray let your spirit be alive you are not only watching you are receiving like kenny shared there is a grace to receive a grace to receive a grace to receive be sensitive gentlemen be sensitive grace to receive grace to receive overflow two overflow two the lord is bringing speed i'm seeing like an arrow but this is not evil this is a grace a grace please bring them overflow too someone's hunger is touching the heavens we'll get to the word shortly let's just do justice to what god is doing god is bringing speed overflow two particularly overflow two speed no more delay by the spirit of god holy 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 Is above all names. God is taking away limitations. 
is doing it by his spirit he's taking away limitations he's taking away limitations he's taking away limitations in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah father bless our hearts in the name of jesus please be seated one of the ushers the spirit of the lord is saying i should tell you the set time has come this is one of the ushers just the ushers the set time has come the set time has come this is a prophetic word for one of the ushers the set time has come that's what the lord is saying and when god speaks like this there is a grace that brings and makes for performance one of our ushers, the Lord is prophesying that your set time has come. Jeremiah chapter 9. Let's get to the word, the glory that excels. Jeremiah chapter 9, we'll start from verse 23. 23. Thus saith the Lord, please pay attention. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Next verse. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. That he understandeth and knoweth me. The Bible starts by listing four categories of people alongside the fact that every of those dimensions carries glory. He starts by saying, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So there is glory in that level of wisdom. That wisdom there is not divine wisdom. Sophia, human wisdom, scientific wisdom. Wisdom that is a product of exploring life for a long time. He says, let not, please go back to 23, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. When the Bible says to not do something, it means that it is possible to do it. Are we together? That means there is a level of glory that the wisdom of this world can bring. Then he moves to the next level. He says, neither let the mighty man glory in your might. So there is glory in might. There are men and women with all kinds of might, intellectual might, military might, and there is a level of glory that you see there. Number three, he says, let not the rich man glory in his riches. It means there is glory in riches. Are we together? That it is possible for you to be rich and there is a glory there. And then he says, but let him that glory it. So in any case, there must be glory. But he's only giving you a reference. Listen carefully. He's not saying glory in strength and all of this. And he's showing you an excellent dimension. That there is glory in the wisdom of men. Are we together now? There is glory in might. There is glory in riches. However, this is the kind and the dimension. I want your glory to be a derivative of the fact that you understand and you know me. Because in understanding and knowing me, there is a representation of all these glories you forsake. That you ignore the glory that comes with the wisdom of men. You ignore the glory that comes with might aside from God. You ignore the glory that comes with riches outside of God. And then you seek to understand and know Him. He says there is a glory that is in that experience. That is surpassing. Greater than the glory that comes. All of these dimensions of glory, they are there. But He's showing you that there is a glory that excels. There is a glory that excels the wisdom of men. There is a glory that excels the might of men. There is a glory that excels earthly riches. He says that glory is a product of an encounter that you understand and you know me. 
That means that if four of us stand, we can both emit levels of glory, but I can trace the basis of that glory. I can know that your glory comes just from earthly riches. Your glory comes from Sophia, human wisdom. Your glory comes from the military might. But I can look at a man and know that this one, this glory is a product of knowing God. Is it not written in your Bible that the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The word glory is very important. The glory of a thing is a measure of its worth. Listen carefully. In the simplest term, the glory of a thing is a measure of its worth, a measure of its value, a measure of its desirability. The more glorious a person and a thing is, the more you are desired, the more the weight of the value that is placed on you and so imagine with me for instance that all of these dimensions are like gold that you are placing on a scale so you place the glory that comes from earthly wisdom and the scale will measure it you will write it you place the glory that comes with riches and might but then that there is a glory that the scale cannot measure when it comes from knowing God, you drop it. It's a glory that excels. It's an all-surpassing glory. Please pay attention. I'm building something now. So the Bible begins to contrast. Number one, he says it is important that the saints glory. But it tells you what to glory in. Because hearing is our Father glorified. When you bear much fruit, in your being glorified, God is being glorified. John 17, Jesus said, the hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may give you glory. Meaning an unglorified saint cannot bring glory to the Father. The glory of the Father is in the glory of the saints. Are we together now? That if there is a dimension of glory the saints do not express, it will short-circuit the understanding of creation about God. Glorify now thy son that thy son will bring you glory add weight to your son add desirability put something within him that the rich outside you cannot have put something within him that the wise outside you cannot have that when you stand on the scale of destiny is a weight that cannot be measured the glory that excels In Mark chapter 2, Jesus taught a mystery that I want to connect to this very quickly. His mysteries were captured in his parables. And in one of the parables, he teaches us on the mystery of wineskins. Please give us verse 18, Mark chapter 2. There is a glory that excels. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees, and you know, and they came up to him and said to him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast? Oh dear, but thy disciples fast not. 19. And Jesus said, He's replying a question. Remember that the foundation of this question was the issue of rituals, structures, systems. Keep that in mind. So he was challenging Jesus' violation of his system. This is the basis for this statement. There is a methodology. There is a way things were done. And now they found out that Jesus was routing his system. He was not conforming to what they were doing. And they, they were questioning his authority. What gave you the audacity to come up with another formula? We are used to this. This is the ritual. But now, Jesus, we see you mentoring your disciples to another route. And Jesus is replying, Can the children of the bridegroom or bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. 20. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast in those days. 21. He says, No man. Now listen. 
he's buttressing on this point now no man also sewed a piece of new cloth on an old garment else the new piece that filled it up take it away from the old and the rent is made worse are we together now next verse and no man put it new wine into old bottles or an old wine skin why else the new wine don't bust the bottles and the wine is spilled and the the bottles will be marred but the new wine must not may be put in a new wine skin listen very carefully jesus is teaching them something here very powerful and then he now brings this his parables on the cloth and then more importantly the wine skin he's saying that if you put wine skin i hope you know that the wine skin he now calls old was once new don't forget that what he now calls old was by a reference new and now he's saying that if you are bringing new wine that it is not possible to bring new wine and put it in an old wine skin that the effect it would be better to have left the old wine and the old wine skin that if you try to mix them there will be a reaction and that that reaction will make the condition worse listen carefully there is a reason why revivals never last there is a reason why the move of God comes for a while. Revival, revival, revival. People organize programs and for one or two weeks people feel spiritual. They feel connected and one month later everyone has gone back to his ways. The reason is because we continue to violate the condition that makes for new wine to be comfortable. The focus is never on the new wine. He says you attract new wine by doing something to the wine skin. You don't ask new wine to come. Something must happen to the wine skin that automatically attracts new wine. Listen carefully. Wine skin in scripture is symbolic of structures and systems. You have to understand this. It's not only just symbolic of a man. It's symbolic of methodologies and strategies. That for every move of God, there is a pattern and there is a spiritual formation that can contain it and host it. Are we together now? I shared with you in one of the services how that when it came to killing the Philistines, God gave Samson a revelation and he took the dry bone, jaw bone of an ass and he killed the Philistines with it. As soon as he was done, he was asked to throw it. Sometimes you don't throw things because they have stopped working. You throw them because they will not be needed again, although they are still working. The Bible never said the old wine skin were already torn. It could still contain it. But that new wine in an old wine skin cannot last. Every move of God and every dimension of glory has a spiritual formation that you must assume. Otherwise, the glory will not be comfortable around you and it will be wasted. This is what Jesus is teaching. That anything, anything that is new from heaven that is coming, the focus is not on what is coming. The focus is on the preparation. Ejimi shared that scripture powerfully here. When it was time for them to experience the glory of God, there were conditions. He said, sanctify yourself. One day is not enough. Two days is not enough. Three days is not enough. Prepare yourself. And even at that, when they saw the glory they were preparing for, they said, Moses, you go and just talk with God. Whatever he tells you, tell us. We will listen. Most people are not prepared for what they pray for because the glory of God, listen, is one thing to ask and continue to ask. One of the reasons why the glory of God may elude certain people, the weightiness of his presence, it may be that we continue to desire that the new wine comes upon the old wine skin. And God says, my not giving you is an act of my mercy because there will be a reaction when the new wine comes upon the old wine skin, that your condition will be worse than you currently are. 
That means it is possible to dish out revelation and a believer's life starts failing from the day he had that revelation. It is not only error that destroys. There is a dimension of truth you can bring. And from the day the believer received it, his life begins to go down. Because the effect of that new wine on his old wine skin creates room for his own destruction. This is not a demon. This is not Satan. This is a spiritual reaction. Jesus is teaching us here. So he's giving us a word of caution. That if it is true that you need a new wine skin then you must find out the structure when the glory of god was going to rest upon the tabernacle in the old testament at that time the tabernacle was a new wine skin so bezalel and aholiab had to receive from god the blueprint the kind of tabernacle that can host the glory they were praying for are we together now they were never to be left to decide God, come, read your Bible. God never comes until the people are prepared by his standards. Not by their desire, not by their cry, not by their hunger. Whenever God wants to come, bringing his anointing, his grace, and all the possibilities contained in him, there will be a requirement. You cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. We're talking about the glory of God here. That there is a glory that excels but i'm showing you the technology by which men transit to rise to superior realms every old wine was once a new wine this is what i want you to know no old wine starts as old wine the tabernacle the law was once new wine the tabernacle in the wilderness was once new wine but a day came when god said i'm connecting this story now they were used to the new wine. They saw the glory that came with the tabernacle. The ark of the covenant. They saw the victories that it brought for them. Now Jesus appears. And then they are saying, Jesus, if you are from God, you must fit into this structure. And he says, I agree it was one a new wine skin, but now I'm bringing in something. Do you have the flexibility and the unashamedness to restructure and adjust your vessel? And sometimes replace it completely so that you can host the new. He was speaking to scribes. He was speaking to Pharisees. When they saw his miracles and they saw the things that he did, they looked at their structure and wondered why those structures did not host that thing. I hope you know God was the one who instituted their structure. But God had left their structure. Once upon a time, John was the new wine skin that was being used the theology that john brought was the most current dealing of the spirit john was in the wilderness and god was giving him mysteries until then there was nobody who could stand as anything newer than john jesus himself testified that of all the prophets no matter what they saw nobody read john's dimension of glory but John was wise. When Jesus came, he said, Behold the Lamb. And John said, Look, I know that with respect to this, I have become an old wineskin. Let me decrease that he will increase. Are you seeing that technology? I decrease. This is the vessel that God is pouring his glory. And when you look up to him, then you are not ashamed. John departed and his disciples were offended because at a point they felt, John, what are you doing? You were shining, you were the person at the center stage, your entire theology was what we built our lives on. And right now you are asking us, are you trying to say all you have taught us was error? And John was trying to say, no, I'm only showing you that there is another dimension of glory that has come. And my structure cannot hold that glory. I was a forerunner. Now that that glory has come, follow that glory. Amazing that John himself didn't follow the glory. And not even him was spared. John died, whereas others were being resurrected. There was a provision in a new structure that John could not experience. He died in offense. He died in pain. 
he died hating Jesus. He died probing the messiahship of Jesus. The man who ordained Jesus to ministry. The man who caused that his heavens were open. He said, go and ask him, are you the messiah? Or should we seek for another? Notice that every time they fought Jesus, they didn't just fight the miracles. They fought the wine skin, the structure. Why are you coming with another pattern? They caught a woman who was in adultery. And there was a structure already that when this woman is caught, you don't discuss, you stone her. And immediately Jesus looks at them and creates another order. Listen to me. You cannot put new wineskin, new revelation, new anointing, new glory in an old structure that does not have the provision to receive it. The question is to sustain the sacrifice and the flexibility that even if it means to tear the old wine to give way, let me tell you that's not as easy as it sounds. That's why we are here tonight. If it was that easy, many people will carry the glory that excels. The hardest part of the coming of the glory is not its arrival. It is the level of stretching that happens to a man to have the new wine skin that makes for the space that this new glory will come upon. That's why we are here. We can, we can shout and jump and say, greater anointing, O God. Greater this. Do you know that the level of living is not the same? Every level of glory has its rules and conditions. This is it. So we may be born again, but the spiritual levels and the levels of glory that come out of us will have certain rules. Because of the level God has taken you, He will give you a rule that is only applicable to you on earth. No other person. It may not make sense, but that is the price to keep the wine skin new. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you. I wrote something down here. Listen. That every level of glory has its demands. There is a price to pay for every dimension of the glory of God that we seek to have. Many people think it's just automatic just because Jesus died. No, sir. There is a demand for every face and every level of glory. The new wine skin is formed when you are willing to subscribe to the terms that make for higher glory. You form the new wine skin by making a decision that Lord, I desire this dimension of your glory. I desire this dimension of your weightiness, your presence upon my life. Now, please listen. Listen. Somewhere along this conference, we are going to be doing an impartation but many of us, let me be sincere with you. The reason why so many men of God continue to pray and lay hands on you. And they bless you from their heart. You can go around and say, I met Bishop Oedeko. I met Papa Adeboye. Have you met this? Yes. But nothing in your life reflects the glory. Because there was a repulsion. Their prayer brought the glory, but it met a structure that would not allow it. You see that? You believe that you receive because you fell down. But I am telling you now that your falling down was not your receiving. Look at the strict condition Elisha went through to carry a mantle. I hope you know it was Elijah that was teaching other people. They were the students in the school of the spirit. Yet it was not enough for them to carry. The, the Bible testifies they were in his school. Think how much of an angry man Elisha was. I won't be surprised that Elijah slapped Elisha once. That kind of tamper that calls fire. Will you want to work with such a person? Once upon a time, Elijah was the new wine skin. And the wine skin kept looking for a replacement. All over, he looked at the entire prophets and none of them had the formation. None, not once. And there was a man who kept stretching himself 
went beyond Gilgal, went all through. And while that was happening, Elijah was watching. Elijah continued to frustrate him intentionally. And that guy would not be offended. Look at all the attributes that were preparing him for that mantle. Then when they crossed beyond Jordan, Elijah looks at him and says, you are really desperate. I, I see the formation. You are looking like me now. The, the kind of alignment, I, I remember this. And I know that you are about to receive something. And he says, what do you want? Then the man said, sir, with all due respect, I know where you stopped. I went more than that. I can take twice. You could not take twice your own anointing. Where you stopped, I respect it. But my, I stretch myself beyond the capacity of that level of grace. And he said, one more test, young man. The last test was the test of sight. The test of sight. Not just the test of physical endurance. All right, you have qualified. But one last test. If it is true that you stretch the way you claim, something should have happened to your eyes. And so let me see if you really pass the test. Because anyone who stretches enough for a double portion, something should have happened to his eyes. It is impossible to say you have stretched like that and your eyes is still blind. Therefore, my dear son, if you can see me as I rise, and he looked and suddenly the eyes, he said, I see you, oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Listen, the anointing came without confusion and he went to Jordan. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? He parted it and it parted Shita and Tita. And the moment that happened, the prophet saw him and they said, the spirit of Elijah don't rest on Elijah. They were so ignorant, they didn't even know it was two times. It was a double portion. Graces don't just come. Anointings don't just come. There is a glory that excels. Listen carefully. Prosperity does not just come. Liftings don't just come. I tell you the reason why the move of God and the treasures of this kingdom never stay on people. It will come for a while and then our lack of structure will fight it and it will go. So you find out that churches experience certain moves of the spirit for three weeks. Strange signs and wonders. Angelic encounters. And then it leaves. They never experience it again. Could this be why sometimes when prophecy comes, the results happen slowly and then it leaves? Because you received the prophecy. It came from heaven. But the spiritual formation that will allow... It says, now arise, O God, from where you are. We have prepared a structure that will make you feel comfortable. Whether you are in heaven or you are in Solomon's temple. Now arise, O Lord. It says, come to your resting place. This is even how demons work. They don't just enter anybody. They search for a formation that looks like where they are coming from or better than it. So when a demon looks at a man, he knows you are not aligned enough for manipulation. So it will continue to create systems around your life that tilt you to be aligned enough. Then it can come. Was it not in your Bible that when a demon leaves a man, when it is returning, it doesn't return alone. It doesn't just return double portion. It gathers seven of its kind. For many years, I wanted to know the mystery behind the very heavy investment of God's presence in others as against others. And I gauged it by many parameters and I found out it didn't match. I gauged it by many spiritual parameters until I found out that this was the secret. Now arise, O Lord come to your resting place that means consistently from heaven mantles and graces and new levels are searching they continue to move around every service looking for new wineskins and they may not find wineskins here is the answer 
to why men can be in church for many years and someone will just come and receive. The person came with hunger, he had stretched himself. Someone else is standing, amen, 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 and nothing is happening. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, I will show you what to do to the wine skin, and then you will see the kind of glory and power that will come upon your life. My life changed and the grace of God upon my life took another dimension. All of these dimensions you see me walking in, they were never there. I prayed and said, Lord, what is the secret? Thank God for impartation, but I knew that mm -mm, impartation is the last step to this thing. There is a way. Why did Elijah have to go through this laborious journey with Elijah? Why? There is a huge price for the glory that excels. You want to speak and let things just happen? You want God to touch the hearts of men? No. This thing is not acting, my brothers and my sisters. It is not even just about praying 10 hours. It is not even just about fasting dry fast. There is something that must happen from within. Now arise, O oh Lord, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness, celebrate. I remember some years ago, one night, I, I will never forget that night, I was watching William Branham, and tears filled my eyes that night. I was so tired, I was sleepy, but I was watching him, and you know, the whole documentary on him. And I said, why do people insult this man? You know, they make it look like he backslided, he left God, just because he missed some things here and there. There are graces that when you carry, I will show you there is you have to ask God to help you stand the heaviness of that grace even you God will have to support you otherwise you will not stand I had a vision I will share with you some visions that I've never shared here during this conference let me finish the William Branham story we're going to pray I remember that night I was looking at this man and for the first time, a sense of honor and compassion. I said, this is an amazing servant of God. The humility that came from that man's life versus all the nonsense that ignorant people kept saying. I said, look at this, look at this man of God. Look at the grace that comes out of this man. And something strange happened to me. It was like light from my laptop. Something cold just rested on my head. Gradually. I didn't used to walk in the prophetic here and there, maybe word of knowledge, this and that, here and there. And something cold, gradually, it took more than 30 minutes, it was entering me. The next meeting I went to, it was like a shock. That was when I started seeing angelic presence like lights, like ribbons. And I said, what is this that I'm seeing? Let me tell you, mantles are still looking for men the problem is that there are too many old wineskins structures that refuse to bend structures that refuse to adjust one day i kept praying i wrote the names of certain fathers of faith that i was praying that god would put upon me the grace that he put upon them and then i had a dream in that dream, I was in Canaan land. I think then, okay, they, just a few years after they had built, uh, let's see, no, I'm not sure it was more than, it wasn't yet up to 10 years since they built the, the auditorium there. And then I found myself preaching. And just like the stage here, I was standing. You have to just keep your toe, just the tip of your toe. That's how you stand to preach. And the stage was shaking. And I couldn't stand well. And I said, is this how these guys stand to preach? That's what I saw in that vision. That means all you see is not just standing on stage. 
many people are standing on there are weights there are gracious people carry that the moment you talk about them in the secret that grace was designed because of the weightiness there are extra privileges that come with it you will find out that your heavens will close alone in the secret no demonic assistance just because of the weightiness of it it is true my brothers and my sisters that even among the stars one different from another in glory in glory this that looks small is a deep spiritual secret it's possible to remain at the same level and god sees that you are better off at that level but if it is the glory that excels that you want to receive a dimension of his weightiness you want to add weight to your spiritual life the requirement is not just prayer the requirement is not just bible study i'm going to show you the requirement turn with me please very quickly to second corinthians chapter 4 many of you have not been trained to have regard for the glory of god that comes upon men second corinthians chapter 4 from verse 17 please for our light affliction which is but for a moment what is the affliction doing walk it for us stop stop there is a raw material that trains men the bible calls it affliction i know you don't <laughs> for this hammer that i use walk it in me this vessel that affliction is like a hammer that can chisel a man he may not know what is happening but there is a, a a formation happening our light affliction apostle paul is writing that worketh for us a what i told you there is a glory that excels if it is that weight of glory you want there is a dimension of affliction that the bible says it is a tool that is used you don't like the nice message i know <laughs> hmm. what do you think makes god to have a covenant with a man not old testament not new testament what do you think empowers that you make a statement and god just honors you reading the bible just praying in the night no sir no sir there are secrets one of them is your volunteering to affliction it was it didn't it say i bear in my he said let no man trouble me i carry a glory that excels and here are the scars that show for it let no demon resist me because i carry a glory that excels and here is the star that shows you want to be an envoy of his presence you want to host the glory of god you want to host the power of god let me tell you there are some sacrifices if you make in the kingdom god will not allow you make other kinds again forever it is true it is true sir there are men and women because of the sacrifice they've had with god god will never allow them to learn about money again in this life it will never happen it's an exemption for them because of what there is an accreditation that happened in that place of pain it's true i always wondered why so many people broke certain principles that i knew that made for certain results and then it looks like life will punish everybody and jump them life will punish everybody and jump them and i said why and god said i am just find out they paid an equivalent of that sacrifice already it is true my brothers and my sisters it is true there is a glory that excels but the bible says for our light affliction 
which is but for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory next verse it says while we look not at the things what are the things the afflictions the things that are seen but the things that are unseen it says for the things that are seen are temporal temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal romans chapter 8 from verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings you know this is paul writing i hope you know it was the same paul that wrote to third of the new testament when paul says i glory in my affliction now you understand what he was saying how do you glory in affliction believers tell me how you glory in affliction that a man is in chains and bonds and he calls it glory I wish what I were telling you were not true was it not because of what Mary was going to carry that all the trouble came upon her life Mary was an innocent virgin for God's sake minding her business and here comes this young carpenter you just ask her out all of a sudden an angel comes and says Mary there is something we are, we are looking for who can carry it we have been searching other women and they refused probably some had the dream and they casted it mm, leave me i want peace in my life and here comes mary let me tell you if everyone were available the angel would not come it looked like gabriel had been searching and finally he says let me try this one we bring you salutation of great joy and she wondered what salutation he said this is what will happen to you and then the woman says be it unto me she thought she was saying let me be pregnant no the process that will allow me to carry the word for nine months be it unto me from that day mary got in trouble to the point that joseph was saying madam i don't know what is it that happened between you and this ghost i don't know which rabbi you are calling an angel but i i won't embarrass you but me i'm going what happens when things start going down and it started the day god spoke to you you were minding your business and it looked like you were better off the day a voice came you will be a mighty man of god from that day your life it looks like god what i was minding myself i was living a happy quiet wonderful life then you go to lie down and sleep and you are seeing a generation and you say god please leave my peace i want my, my plan is to live a nice life ah. this is the price for carrying the burden of a generation king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. I preached a message years ago called the fullness of affliction. And several people said all kinds of things against the message and I said, oh dear. God has an economy. God has a non-negotiable system. This is the reason why he loves everybody, but not everybody carries the same weight of glory. My brothers and my sisters, the glory of God upon a man is not dependent on his predetermined counsel. It's how much you are willing to be stretched until you are reformed. Like the potter, sometimes you will need to smash that clay again and start building. You built it before into a vessel and then you will smash it back and that clay is you. Hallelujah. It's a very, very huge sacrifice to carry the glory of God. The weightiness of His presence. Most times we admire the results that we see 
But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, behind the veil, what you see there is the blood and the tears that came with lifting this weight. It's a heavy weight. A far more exceeding weight of glory. A far more exceeding weight of glory. Hallelujah. That you speak to a man and his life does not change. You go back to God and say, Lord, why now? I spoke and God says, no, there is a glory level. There is there, not every part of the mountain delivers the same result. It says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? It's a journey. If an aircraft will not keep you at the top of the hill, you will walk. There were 5,000 men aside women and children who climbed up the mountain and they were privy to hear certain things that others did not hear the way to the throne is the cross the way to the throne is the cross you will never get to the throne ignoring the cross the only ladder that you will use to climb the throne of destiny is the cross where God will give you a governmental grace to speak over nations you become Beulah and Hephzibah the desire of nations notice in the parable of the talents do you know the real blessing that happened to them? It was not well done, good and faithful. I used to think it was well done, good and faithful servant. Until one day the Spirit of the Lord says, study it. And I found out, well done, good and faithful servant was a patting of their back. Certain portions were, up, were given to them. Territorial influences. That was the blessing. The labor of doing something with what they were given qualify them for these dimensions at every level at every level please listen to me carefully at every level there is a demand there is a level of sacrifice there is a level of real sacrifice that makes for certain glories but Paul said compared to the glory that that level delivers the sacrifice can be called a light affliction second Corinthians chapter 3 we are going to pray from verse 9 and 10 it says for if the ministration of condemnation talking about the law now carried some glory in it he said much more that the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory next verse he says for even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels that there is a level you can walk with god my brothers and my sisters and through this sacrifice of remolding yourself to become a new wine skin that god will put a dimension of his glory that when you look back what you used to call glory that it is not glory in this respect a level of signs and wonders a level of the performance of God's word. A level of increase and grace. A level of prosperity. The wealth of the kingdom. A level of spiritual illumination. It comes by that track record of pain and sacrifice. Sacrifice. The weightiness of God's glory. Finding vessels that can fit it. The weightiness of God's power. Finding vessels that can receive it. The weightiness of the spirit of revelation. Finding men. There are times that it comes close and you fall. You can't even host it first. And then it goes back. Waiting for you to truly become that vessel. It says, but we all like living stones. We are being chiseled and built into a spiritual house. A house that can host God. 
There are many things in my life today I would have prayed for for so long to come. But sometimes just a desire in my heart is enough to bring it. The secret is that when you contend for the glory that excels. Please hear me. If you are a man of God here, hear me twice. What we call ministry now, in the next five years, many people will be frustrated. Because there are people pressing into these dimensions genuinely. There are people that desire tangibility, substance of the spirit. They are the ones who will become the desire of nations. And many others will pale and fade in glory. This is not backsliding. This is that God has begun something. It's a new order. And like John the Baptist and like the scribes, you may scrounge around for relevance. But the light now is on Jesus. The question, therefore, is are you willing to subscribe to the demands? Demands of lifestyle? Demands of covenant? Listen, it will cost you everything. The price for all of God is all of you. Let me say it again. The price for all of God is all of you. Write it, media. Let the word lend this. The price for God's head is not all of you. The price for God's hand is not all of you. The price for God's heart and all of Him is all of you. That's why we can see certain dimensions. You just want the wisdom of God or some dimensions of His creativity, but not all of Him. If you want to host God, then all of you must be beaten like the potter with the clay. It's not a gospel that many people like. Nobody likes suffering. Nobody likes affliction. We were not designed that way. That's why it's a sacrifice. There is a glory that excels. But it will come upon vessels that have been worked on changed he says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then it says we all with unveiled face beholding him as in a glass we are changed you know it looks like once you are just looking you are being changed ask elisha it was not just looking like it was saying there is a dynamics of death that works in you so that life will work in other people let me tell you this 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 thing i'm teaching you is a is a master mystery even in the occult and those who practice all of these things their, the level of glory in court if i will use that word is corresponding to their, the level of tremendous sacrifice I remember reading a book about a, a, somebody who would receive some kind of strange power. And the condition was to fast non-stop for 150 days. If you miss one day, you start afresh. You don't continue. You fast to a point that you don't know whether you have eaten or not. There is, your body has lost the ability to tell you whether you are full or you are hungry. So God will want to take you to certain realms. And God will now say, Oh, Pastor Alpha, because of what I'm about to do for the next five months, I will need every 12 to 3 a.m. of your time. Not 3 to 5. Regardless of what the event is, the demand is 12 o'clock to 3. The next six months. Think about it. If you are interested, let me know. You will be free from 9 to 11. That's not the timing God gave you. You will even be free from 40 forever. You will find out that you will be so tired by 11.45. You don't know if you are standing or sitting. But you remember that our light affliction. You may look stupid. See, it's difficult to do these things when you have people that love you. They will pity you too much to allow you continue. The pain of what you go through, it will attract their sympathy. That's why Abraham told the servants, wait here. I have to go alone with my sacrifice. If those servants were on the mountain, they would fight Abraham and bring Isaac down. There are certain things when God wants to do in your life, you, you have to agree with him that you will be alone in this. 
so that he can do with you what he wants because the innocence and the humanity of men sometimes will interrupt the process if you're married and you see your husband eating once a week and acting like a strange man one day you will be tired you will close the door and sit down there and start crying and whether he's, he's serious with god or not the compassion that comes from that union will make him say god whatever it is please let me just let me just let me just subscribe to the demands of my wife what do you think made john the greatest prophet have you studied john's life how much of his life was in public view look at how john was born from that time at least for jesus we saw what happened the first 12 years what happened to the next 18 years of jesus is something you should find out because the bible does not tell us any other thing again about jesus from age 12 until 30 we see a man coming what happened for those 18 years what happened to the 19 years of paul in the wilderness of arabia what happened to the 40 years of moses at the backside of the mountain let me show you that this is consistent with men who carry glory it is not new it didn't start now are we together john the baptist the bible just shows us that there is an adult in the wilderness who was given a, a what i would call a wicked prescription there was meat those days there was fish those days there was wine those days but he dressed in camel skin and then he was in the wilderness and the only food that he was allowed to eat was locusts and wild honey was he not the prophet that was told to sleep on one side for one year i don't know if you don't read your bibles did you read about the prophet who ate animal dung for one year <laughs> i tell you why our generation is powerless we are noisy people but there's no power this is it we hate the sacrificial dimension that brings the glory let him that glory and glory in this that he knoweth me he understands my way and because of his subscribing to my patterns he can carry a glory that is greater than the glory of the wise greater than the glory of the strong greater than the glory of the rich there are men let me tell you i believe that there are people who will open up their hearts and say lord i am willing let's go this journey I am willing. I am willing. You know, most times we sing songs of surrender and we just sing them as special numbers. I want you now to think because God answers those prayers. Use me, oh God. I'm available. And God says, I'm listening. Keep talking. Do with me anything you want to do. Uh, have you had that kind of prayer? God says, thank you. This is all I've been asking you. It's a dangerous prayer to say, do with me what you want. It's even dangerous to sing it. Do with me what you want. Do with me what you want. You study the scapegoat that was taken. Malhandled and taken everywhere. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. Do with me what you want. Lord, my life is yours. Do with me what you want. And God says, okay, I look at you and I need to chisel here and here can i go on and you say lord i've said do with me what you want the first hammer touching you you say god is this it no i changed my mind is it by force i'm already born again god says it's not by force but then the glory you seek do not be angry when you see it on another person so many men of god can be here but there is glory that excels corresponding to the spiritual sacrifices let me tell you this is a non-negotiable condition there are cups you don't pray to pass you you obtain the grace to drink them he said grant that you know when you have conquered caesar etc etc let me sit at your left 
and write. The mother of James and John was asking. Jesus didn't say there is no vacancy. He said, you want to sit close to me? Here is the condition. One, can you drink of my cup internal? And can you be baptized with my baptism? The woman didn't answer it for the children. John would later answer it. And he paid for it. He really did. He was at the Isle of Patmos. But that guy had so pressed into these things that hot oil had no effect on him. And Peronero said, what do we do with this guy now? We have tried to roast him in oil. It didn't work. And they banished him to an isle called Patmos. These are the men the Bible says the earth is not worthy of. There is a reason why the earth is not worthy. They walk sometimes like fugitives and vagabonds, looking for a city whose builder and maker is the Lord. They so pressed into these things for some of them, life made no sense again. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. I thought Jesus being the son of God, Jakes, should, should exempt him from this pattern. Why will the son of God be in the wilderness? Talk to me, believers. The son of God left heaven, born of the spirit. He didn't change the pattern. As soon as Jesus came out of the water, it was not a demon that drove him. There are many times what drives you to that wilderness is not always Satan. The spirit didn't speak. He drove him to the wilderness. Notice that every time these men were in these places, they were alone. It's not a corporate thing. It's not a husband and wife thing. It's not a classmate. It's not a roommate thing. It is you and God and your destiny. This is the price it takes to be trusted with the keys of a generation. This is the price it takes to become the face of God to a generation. It's not by voting. It's not by popularity census. It's not by likes and shares. It's a testament of a sacrifice in the spirit. Known by both God and demons. Believers, either we are just playing games and we truly do not desire to be the carriers of this glory, or someone here will be willing to pray. Listen, let me tell you, you would think the sacrifice to host God's glory is hard until you see the alternative. The alternative is a miserable life of guessing left, right, and center with your destiny shattered and you are, you are a victim of just anything. Jesus paid the price once. And he was ready. By this time, many years ago, Jesus was in hell. Hellfire. Jesus. Hellfire. Jesus. Hades. The place of the dead. And the father was watching. And all these demons were upon their own creator, the word of God, that proceeded. Ah, but though weeping endures for a night one thing I know is that affliction does not remain forever it has an expiry date when the legal claims of justice were made Paul reveals to us by the spirit that Jesus made a public show of them triumphing over them and one of the things he got in hell so there can be keys in hell and you will need to go down to hell to get some keys. Sometimes you will need to go down to come up with keys. 
Jesus descended before he ascended. So you rise up by going down. Are we together now? And he collected the keys. And in Revelations he said, I am he that was dead, but now I am alive. And I hold the keys. The coronation service only happened when he went through this. We are going to pray tonight. There is a glory that excels. I bring you a very powerful mystery. The glory that excels. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech thee, brethren. Who is he talking to? Brethren. Not unbelievers. I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Offer, offer your bodies as a, not a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Let me tell you what that means. A sacrifice that remains a sacrifice. When a sacrifice dies, it stops being a sacrifice. It's over. The real sacrifice was the life of that object. So when the life goes, there's no more sacrifice. It is the process of extracting life from that thing that is the sacrifice. Now he says you are a sacrifice. You are alive. But it's a posture you will continue to take. Holy and acceptable unto God. And he says it's your reasonable act of worship. I have found this key from the day i found this key i stopped being afraid of pain i stopped being afraid of sacrifice i became friends with it and i found out that in that darkness that's where light comes from god who had commanded light to shine out of darkness not into darkness out of darkness darkness is the mother that gives birth to light and the evening came and the morning and the evening came and the morning let me encourage you listen to me listen to me very carefully be careful so that you don't judge things from the standpoint of men there are certain things that you may be passing through that you may think these things are happening just because of unbelief i told you that faith doesn't always receive it also takes faith to release you lose things too by faith by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice there were women who their children died and instead of them to raise them back they said no problem let them go and the bible calls it faith read it it's not everybody who brought their child back to life that were called men of faith others died Do you know why plants grow? Because they subscribe to this same principle. Death and glory. When you carry a seed and throw it on the earth, what happens? You studied agric. What happens? The life is in the death, takes. You come back after two days. If you open it, you will see that there is no more beauty. There is no beauty in the grave. There is no comeliness. There is only the death that brings resurrection. And notice what happens. The first thing that happens is some process of decay and even degradation. And then out of the rottenness, it begins to open. It's deshaping as bad as it is. It's making room for something new. And sometimes it can be so bad that part of the old one will come out too with a new one. And you can look at it and know this is the dead seed. And this is the one that grows. I wish I can tell you the glory of God comes just by speaking and saying receive grace. There are, you want to be given the keys of a nation. My brother and my sister, there is a track record. There is a scar. There is a testament of death that must happen. I presume we are going to pray tonight because it looks like we are in a funeral service. 
You know what you do in a funeral service? You dig the ground and you carry the dead body and throw it in. But when you throw the body in the funeral service, you don't expect it to come out. But what we are engaging tonight is a mystery. That when you are thrown in the grave, then you are ready to come out. After a few days of silence, suddenly, suddenly, you begin to shoot against gravity with another life. And that small, tiny seed will now become a tree that birds will come and nest. They will be grateful that you paid the price. Every food you eat today is because a seed volunteered to die. Listen to me carefully. If seeds stop dying, you stop rising too. The reason why we continue to live is because there are seeds that are dying. They died last year. The moment rain starts falling. Isn't it amazing that when rain starts falling, that's the right time for the seed to die. Seeds die during rain. Rain that should give life. But that's when seeds die. And then life comes from it. We're going to pray. In the next... 10 minutes it's going to be a general prayer before i lead you find whatever corner outside this is you and god just play worship for us and you're going to say lord the death that must turn me into a new wine skin let it happen to me tonight the death that must happen oh god for the glory that this generation is waiting for don't be afraid the sacrifice Lord you are calling me to be a prophet to the nations but there is a level of death please pray this is between you and God let hope rise The trembles in your holy love Let hope, let it rise The trembles in your holy love Pray. Pray. Sila barakata zina na malana matuli arara. Era ba she na na ma she na 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 na. Era na na she na 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 she na 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 she. Lira sabaru shalis kamanda prati gala sobras kadi alhasa. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. But whoever loses it for my sake will gain it. We gain things in this kingdom by losing them. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, 
breathe on me. Are there people praying tonight? Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me. Walk through me. Yeah. Live through me. Oh, come with the refiner's fire. 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 As the deer pants after the water brook, find a generation, my king. Find a generation that desires you more than life, more than wisdom, more than money, more than power. Find for yourself a bride adorned in her beauty. Everything. Turn me, O oh God, to the wine skin that will host your power in this generation. Turn me, O oh God, to the wine skin that will host the end time anointing for miracles, for wealth, for signs, for wonders. Yeshua, 
Two or three more minutes. But in a great house, there are vessels of gold and of silver, of wood and of clay. Some are unto honor, and others are unto dishonor. belongs to you. Hey, You see, my brothers and my sisters, one of the assignments of fire the primary purpose of fire was not just for demons it was for the saints it is the fire of the holy spirit it's not just holy ghost fire demons the fire not only refines not only purifies it can melt completely and then remold again it is not every time the fire comes to just purify sometimes that whole vessel needs to melt down for something new to come it is not every time god comes to adjust the old sometimes he comes to immerse you into his fire then remold you as something that has never been before Yeshua Hamashiach Komina Nakane Yeshua Komina Nakane I'd like you tonight to pray Lord whatever took your place in my life please return to your resting place If someone pray tonight I don't know how it got there but in this season arise majesty 
return to your resting place. Arise, my God, return to your place of rest. Yeshua, Hamashida, Omina Nakane. Yeshua, Hamashida. For some of us, is friends. Some of us is the obsession to succeed. Some of us is the obsession to be in ministry. Whatever has taken its place. Please dethrone it this night. Dethrone it this night. For some of us, it's money that took its place. Reputation. Ego. Revelation. The quest for the anointing. In this season, let me tell you, the new wine of the Spirit is moving from nation to nation, from continent to continent, finding the vessels that have the space. There are all kinds of mantles, graces that have not been seen before, but they are searching for a new wine skin. You cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. You cannot put a new prophetic wine in an old prophetic wine skin. A new apostolic wine in an old apostolic wine skin. A new territorial wine in an old territorial wine skin. Let us leave the old and press for the new. Press for the new. Press for the new. Pray just one more minute, and then we'll pray corporately. That's why we came tonight. Without new wine, you cannot have the new songs. Without new wine, you cannot have the new sermons. You will keep recycling the old, copying from man of God to man of God. It will take new wine. To understand the rhythm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. We have a few more minutes. Just a few minutes and then we'll stop. Acts chapter 26. And verse 22 there are times in your life listen where because of the kind of glory that is coming no matter how you release yourself you will still not have the capacity you will need to cry for an assistance from heaven he says having therefore obtained help of God I continue unto this day the reason I'm still standing from glory to glory I saturated my effort at a point but having obtained help from God I continue to this day having obtained help from God in the apostolic ministry in the prophetic ministry in the pursuits to bring the wealth of the kingdom to the saints in the pursuit to doing this and that whatever it is there are times when you stretch yourself to the limit and it still cannot make for the size of the glory. You will need to turn to the helper of Zion. 
it says having therefore obtained help of God I continue it takes the help of God to keep going there are times you will reach your elastic limit you will stretch and break to pieces you will still not meet God's standard is someone ready to cry for help from heaven Lord assist me assist me let 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 the divine help the alignment it will take to command the wealth of the kingdom in this season Lord assist me there is only so much I can do the alignment that will be required to carry the apostolic and the prophetic grace I cry for help having obtained help from God I continue God is the helper of men God can help you He can help you rise He can help you stand He can help you reign He can help you conquer He has not stopped being the helper The Holy Spirit is called the helper Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please spare yourselves in truth if you can. Just hold someone, those under the anointing or just alone, just leave them. But hold your hands. You are going to cry to heaven, agreeing with that person. Say, Lord, a superior realm of results, a new dimension of grace, glory that is all encompassing. I receive it. Agree, agree, agree with somebody. Pray outside, pray. Those online, pray. This is the season, oh God, of the glory that excels in ministry, in business. The glory that excels. Shakatakata, bakaparoko to shekete, ebrekete nekete kete kete, shakato se baruza panikata. The glory that excels. The weightiness, the desirability that excels, that I become the desire of nations, I become the desire of kings. Please pray. Shekete kete kete, el braga do la paruta shekete, e koto 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 bash, el braga tu zasiana kata. Rapa papa ruto totos, endere ketos kelebas, rakata paruto sebregede, prate sosi davias, e prakato sese tekata, kumba uda sopragede baladaba, em prokoto sekete lebaras. Alleluia, Alleluia. Psalm 45, verse 12. I believe it is, the Lord just put it in my heart. This is the level that God is taking us to. I hope you remember the teaching I did about Tyre and Sidon. The marketplace of the earth. Where the exchange is made. It says, and the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. He says, even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor. There is an investment of the Spirit that comes upon your life. Listen, I want to show you how this relates to extraordinary fruitfulness. There are realms where you will not beg and search for. Your sacrifice and your investment will cause nobles to come with what you would have looked for. The daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The gift you would have been searching for. And then the rich among the people, not the poor. There is a grace because you left looking for the glory of wealth to seek his face. He will cause those who have the glory of the wealth to come to entreat your favor. Listen. 
that means wealth is not favor because there is a favor that even the rich are looking for what is it they are not coming to just look at you there is something money cannot buy the rich will entreat your favor they will come to you and it will be a privilege to give them audience I like you to pray and say Lord on account of the glory you are putting upon my life even in this season let the daughter of Tyre begin to come with her gift and let the kings of these systems come with their treasures to entreat my favor please lift your voice and pray pray with understanding pray with understanding because I have subscribed to the glory that comes from your face not the glory that comes from wealth not the glory that comes from human wisdom not the glory that comes from human might the glory that comes from knowing you let the daughter of Tyre come with her gift let the nobles of the earth begin to entreat my favor pray for koinonia in this season kings coming to entreat your favor hallelujah the bible says that a time will come when seven virgins it was a prophetic statement seven virgins will hold on to one man that spiritual jew they are not holding on to him just because he's handsome there is something that the tribe he comes from carries and seven dimensions that have not been seen come to you and say we want to be part of your life we want to be featured in your destiny such a force of attraction such a force of attraction dimensions that have never been seen they will come and latch on to you father whatever is for me in this season by the grace you are putting on my life it must be attracted to me in this season Lift your voice and pray like a believer. You are placing an anointing. You are placing a grace and a glory. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. You are my glory. You are my inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Time will fail me to share with you the testimonies of the level of ease that your life will step into when you truly carry the glory of God. The glory of God is a voice. It can speak. It can speak to kings. That the things you once desired will come to you at a platter. Because his glory is upon you. He says, arise, shine. For your light has come. Not just that. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory that excels. This is the glory that will humble the arrogance of the kings of the earth if all you look for is money you will be like them if all you look for is human scientific wisdom you will be like them if all you look for is human systems of fortification but press for his face understand his ways and let him invest upon you a glory that excels and you will watch with wonder the way God will draw glory out of your life. 
there are new and strange kinds of anointings that are coming upon the body of Christ. There are new and strange dimensions of the workings of the Spirit as has never been seen. The times and the seasons already signify it. And our own is just to say, Maranatha, come Lord. Come with all of these things. Come. Come. The body of Christ is stepping into certain offices. Certain levels of spiritual possibilities. That might have four prophecies of the church ascending. We will humble the pride of kings. The church is not a nuisance to civilization. No. God is giving us a voice that cannot be silenced. A voice that not the rich will ignore. The poor will not ignore. Politicians will not ignore. But our price is to become the new wine skin that can carry that new wine. And when the new wine finds a resting place, then there is no limit to what you can do. Let me round up. When the feast was about to finish and Jesus turned water to wine, the first to taste of that wine were the rulers of the ceremony. Listen carefully. That wine was not designed for the general congregation. The wine was a statement. And so, the attention of the kings, they were the first to taste of the wine. All other kinds of wines could be taken by everyone. But the kings took it. And they said, where did you get this? People bring the best at the beginning. But you have saved the last. That means the investment that God is giving us is to subdue the gatekeepers of territories. Not just for things common. No. The gatekeepers of territories. Access to the heart of nobles. Because one 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 madman in Gadara, listen, one madman in Gadara is equivalent to ten cities. We don't have the time again to go one by one to every city. No. God will be giving us the madman in Gadara and the woman by the well. God is will use one person like an arrow from a man's quiver and shoot nations with it. That's what God is doing. Listen to me and hear what I'm saying again prophetically. It will no longer be one by one. Go to this. There's no time for that again. So he will give us a grace. One grace that can touch a voice that will make all other voices hear him. That's territorial dominion. It no longer will be people one by one. It's a waste of time. He will be taking us to the madmen at Gadara for the sake of the Decapolis. He will be taking us to the women at the well for the sake of all who will come with her. All those who have the voice of systems, God will send us to them. That is why we need a glory that is higher than what they have. Otherwise they will not hear the word of the Lord upon you. It was Nicodemus that came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man. Not I know. Not I know. Not I know. Meaning that we have been watching you and we have seen that even though we don't have this, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these things. The mountain of the Lord's house. It will look like a dream until you see it happening. Until you see that God gives you the heart of kings. And then you plant the seed of righteousness. That in one day a nation can be saved. Because their kings are saved. Was it not in one day Nebuchadnezzar signed a decree? 
and said everywhere across Babylon let the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that anyone who does not worship that God should be killed there are spectacular things that God will do to men that will change men I'm available oh. I don't know about you but my heart is listen let me tell you the truth and I sincerely tell you this the concept of church as we know it is changing fast it will no longer just be a man of God and plenty people just no 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 it's going to be the level of access to territories that God will give you keys to territories men who will walk like gods upon the earth that you will speak and both your members and your non-members will be forced to hear because of what you hold this is what god is doing please i like you to be sensitive these seven days don't be casual we're we're at the edge of the unfolding of a new move of God is like a boiling pot that is already tilting and God is doing something very prophetic and very apostolic father we give you all the praise tonight we declare by the spirit of the living God that we are ready to be the carriers of this glory that excels the glory that will bring you much gain the glory that will make a man more priceless than a nation. We pray, O oh God, for the help that comes from you to go through the sacrifice of the transformation that will be required to make us new wineskins so that we will be able to effectively host this wine. But we pray, O oh God, Maranatha, come. Let these dimensions come without hindrance. We pray even for this house. Let this house as a corporate entity be transformed into a new wine skin. Thank God for what you have done before. But we are ready to receive what you are doing now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to mixler.com. And download the teachings on koinoniasermons.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814 721 or 0907 777 7855